Well, good evening, GP doctors of North America. I appreciate you spending an hour plus with me tonight on a very special 9-11 day in our, our country here. I'm Dr. Arvind Petrie. I'm going to be spending the next hour or so of our time together discussing MOPs and HFB. MOP is short for microosseous perforations. HFB is high frequency vibration. Uh, the whole goal and presentation title is how we can inject better predictability, literally, into our orthodontic cases. Off the get-go, this is the number one thing that I focus on in my career in my life. These are my kiddos, my oldest Addison, my middle child Amelia, and my youngest, newest born, Mr. Augustin, or as I call him, the fart factory. Um, I'm part of a large group of North American international dentists that do a lot of Invisalign together, and we've got a saying that we are family. And this is most important for why we do what we do. And if you're not doing this for the right reasons, take a look at your fam. This is what, this is what we do everything for. This is me on the far right. I'm getting hidden by these beautiful ladies who are my absolute team, my backbone, my, my dream, my staff. Um, Petrie Advanced Dental is my private practice that I work here in Tacoma, Washington, that I started in 2013. This is a nice, beautiful picture of Tacoma. It is not that sexy. A mile down the road, a lovely doctor, David Clark, practices BioClear and teaches BioClear, a wonderful modality if you're not currently using it in your practice. Uh, a couple of wonderful dentists have come from the other mile down the road back in the day. Gentlemen by Frank Spear and John Coyce used to practice on the Tide Flats near Tacoma. So we've got a lot of dental history, dental blood here up in the Northwest. I do want to give a shout out here at the very beginning of my presentation to Dr. David Galler of Greater New York City. Uh, Dave is a great friend and a mentor and has taught me basically everything I've known about clear liner therapy over the last several years to help bolder my career and do a lot bigger, better treatments. Basically on me, uh, I'm a Northwest boy, born and raised. Went to the University of Washington, the Huskies, for my undergraduate education. I went out to Pennsylvania, spent several years at Pittsburgh for dental school. I did do a residency in Spokane, Washington, home of the Gonzaga Bulldogs, if you're not familiar with Spokane, for a AEGD. I was trained in Invisalign in 2013. I fumbled around for over two years, not sure what I was doing until about 2015 when I met Dr. Galler and also my Propel rep, James McDonald, and was introduced to Propel in 2015, around the same time that my Invisalign game started to take off. This is a caption for the NWA, the Northwest Aligners. Uh, this is a local study club made of some of the highest producing GP docs for clear liner therapy in the Northwest and Canada. Uh, my group is based off mainly Northwest, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Vancouver, Canada. I do serve as their president and club member. And I also do serve on the board for the American Academy of Clear Aligners, another wonderful organization for those looking to get more information and a support group for your clear aligner orthodontic therapy. Tonight's presentation, we are going to put my spin on MOPS and HFV. I wanna talk about how I do treatment in my office and how it works for me. Um, what the MOPS and HFV does in terms of reducing my treatment time how I increase my case acceptance and how I try and reduce my refinements. I'm gonna to talk to you about my techniques, my protocols, because you know, you're gonna to go to 10 different dentists for a treatment plan and a modality, and you'll get 10 different treatment plans back and 10 different ways of doing something. But this is what works for me. Um, also as a way to attract new patients, this is a wonderful thing to create a niche group so you can differentiate yourself and your staff in your office from other orthodontists, especially in GPs doing orthodontic clear line of therapy. Um, I also want to tell you that after tonight, I want you to start doing this immediately. If you don't know who your Propel rep is, find out. Email me, text me. I'll find out. I'll text them. Because you should be doing this in your office now. This is a no-brainer for me. I'm happy to discuss about it. Quick disclaimer, just for the legal purposes, I am technically a part-time employee now of Align Technologies or the Invisalign providers, the big guys. I do own some stock and securities in their company. I don't have family member in dentistry whatsoever or have any interest. I have not previously consulted or evaluated products on a professional level for any dental companies or organizations. And I have been compensated for our webinar this evening. So I hope you all can learn something from what I have to say. So I'm going to jump right into some basic science and talk about uh, how, does, how does all this work? We're going to talk a lot about inflammation, cytokines, things of that nature, and then we'll get down to the nitty gritty here. But basic biology here. You push on a tooth. When you do that, what happens? Force, vector. Bone gets made, bone breaks down, bone gets created. 
obviously on the side that you're pushing against the bone, it's broken down by osteoclastic activity. Osteoblasts are going to go ahead and build in the bone on the back side. And there is your tooth physiology, mobility, orthodontics 101. Another side to think about with pathology regarding heavy forces here is you can only put so much force on the tooth and have it move. At some point in time, it's going to oversaturate and have vascular obstruction. There's a reason why you can't move teeth in a day. You can't do one hour aligner changes. You can't change your arch wire every other day. It simply does not work. You're going to necrose the cell. You're going to bunt the bone and cause other sorts of problems. It's a biological saturation point. I've got a lot of heavy slides on science, which I'm going to breeze through. If you have questions about that, you can email me privately or talk to your Propel rep. There's a lot of good information out there. If you have time to go research it, my hat tips to you. I certainly don't, but I shouldn't have in the past. The stuff works. So let's look at mop targets and rate remodeling. How does any and all of this work? Bone stimulation, all it is is inflammation. So it's the key word here. You increase your cytokine levels, your bone density decreases, the rate of bone remodeling goes up, and your rate of tooth movement goes faster. Very straightforward science. We look at some preclinicals here. We got some basic graphs using a orthodontic control on the left side and orthodontic and mop on the right side. If we look at our, our, our XY graph here, tooth movement on the left and our controls in our group on the right, when you add mops here, you increase the rate of tooth movement. Now this was done from rats in case you wanna know where this is coming from. As you can see here from the picture, this is a rat bone. Top picture shows a control. We have orthodontic separation of teeth, just straight up. And then the lower slide shows several mops placed in the lower right side and then the distalization of those teeth. And you can see a much greater increase in that movement. It's very impressive. More studies showing here, if we look at, you know, significant increase in bone remodeling markers, as you go through the day of your mop, you have a massive increase in these cytokine activities, which leads to a decrease in bone density. What does that mean? Very basic, mop is faster tooth movement. Another slide showing if we look at orthodontic movement by itself and then orthodontic movement, one side with mop, one side without, we have a much greater full change compared to the control group when you introduce mops into the rate of movement. This is looking at canines. Someone's gonna always ask you, and your patients will definitely ask you, my gosh, that sounds terrible. You're gonna put a what into my bone, into my what? You'll, we'll talk about how to use certain verbiage here to get patients comfortable with that. But long story short, mops are well tolerated. You know, my first introduction to mop was at a Bellevue Hotel several years ago. And after one pint of beer with a local California doc, I decided to put the mop into my bone and see how it felt afterwards. And I'll tell you, it wasn't too bad. Now, I didn't go all the way into the cortical plate, but a pint of Seattle IPA will definitely numb you enough. It's not, not terrible. But this slide shows that the day of your mops, patient discomfort level between non-mops and mops is about the same. Now, someone out there might say, hey, yeah, your patient's numb. They're not going to feel any different. Fine. I agree. Let's go to day one. It's the same. No reported difference in discomfort between each group. Seven days, 14 days, 28 days. All the studies say, hey, with mops, it, it, discomfort's about the same. It's no worse. I love, love, love this slide. If we're looking at it here, of adverse effects with mops, none. Okay, we're not getting root blunting, we're not getting fractures, we're not getting any of that. If we look at the slides here, starting left-hand column, we just have a standard orthodontic movement where we lost the bicuspid tooth. And we're looking to do orthodontic translation or bodily movement of this canine. As you can see with the tad and the spring fold here, we're, we're pulling the tooth, but we go to the right-hand slides. Now we look at orthodontic translational movement of, that, of the opposite side canine with mop. And we can see we have a much greater distalization of that canine. If you look at slide A, 24, immediately afterwards, excuse me, slide B, 24, slide C, 28 days. What's our conclusion? Mops are effective. They're well-tolerated and they're safe. They can reduce your orthodontic treatment time by 60%. Now, these are the ballers out there. Am I getting 60%? Not quite, but I'm cutting my treatment times in one third to one half. That is impressive. Okay, supporting studies here. This is out of West Virginia University. I love this slide as well. I don't know where they found males in Western Virginia University that still have all their teeth, but they found some. And what these CBCT scans show is the accuracy between three and 14 day intervals. And we have no loss of accuracy. Very, very compliant, very good patients, but tracking is on par. It is superb. Wonderful slide here showing a pre-treatment clinical photo on top side of a severe overjet. Would any of you generally treat this in your practice here? 
many of you would say no, even I might say no, but I would never consider doing this case without Mobster HFE to go in here and release bone tension and get better controlled movements. As this treat or this patient was treated here, we can see the expansion was done and eventually, obviously seven and 10 were implants placed to finish out the proper bite of the sportive. If you want to get nerdy on me, any of you uh, introverts out there, look up this book, Clinical Guide to Accelerator Orthodontics. It's a wonderful tool to use. We'll go through step-by-step -step tutorials, supportive education to show why this works. But honestly, get a propel driver in your hand, do this. You'll see the applications speak for themselves. All right, let's, uh, let's go through and look at some devices here. Anyone starting out, if you have not done this yet, or you're currently just dabbling it here, you're probably doing a replaceable tip driver. Okay, this is a autoclavable handpiece with a disposable tip. The open side on the bottom left corner shows what a traditional tip would look like versus a closed here. Um, I don't even know if they still make the open to be frank. All of you big ballers out there who like things faster, quick, and more predictable, and don't like to strain and portion your hand, get the power tip driver, okay? Um, I'm going to talk about what I use in my practice later. I do think it's a wonderful tool. I don't currently have it because I do use my implant driver for my, my mops. Um, but this is motor, motorized. It's autoclavable, same disposable tips. Um, you can adjust your torque setting. It's fast. It's ergonomic. It's easy to place. It is, it is much more convenient. Anyone that's doing Propel regularly or any sort of mops, you're going to want to get this device. But when your rep comes in, unless you've got a baller rep like I do up here in Seattle, they're probably gonna bring something on here on the left-hand side, which is fine to start out with. I did this for two, three years before I moved to the motorized campaign. Again, gold standard. It's the first and only product Propel to be used and cleared by the FDA for mycoosseous perforation. Nobody else out there has that, okay? And compliance and your comfort and support is huge on this. Any malocclusion, any treatment, it's it's all doctor controlled it's faster it's more predictable you know you can use this for surgery for root protection to reduce pain through other things yeah it's not just orthodontic movements but we're going to focus on that you know i've i've heard of docs even amongst some of my clear liner groups doing uh cheaper ways don't be the top guy don't be the upper slide here you do not want this on your patient okay why not use a burr in a slow speed implant driver here well this happens Hey, that is a lot of bone removal. That is a lot of morbidity. In fact, that's 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 battery in some cases here. Okay, don't forget your your code of ethic. Um, when you're using a burr, you you got to worry about heat necrosis. You know, where's your anatomy? Where's your roots? Soft tissue trauma. Um, a lot of things here. These aren't these aren't proper. You know, when you look at what the design is, if you wanted to consider using something like a tad, you know, a bone screw here. Um, again, you you've got to look at how deep we're gonna we're gonna be going here, and we'll talk about that shortly. But when you look at the mop threads, each little thread's about a millimeter or so. So here's your average depth in use when you look at a mop, and it's only, depending on which place, one to three millimeters here. Okay, when we go over to look at a tad, well, you're, you're up upwards past seven millimeters here to get the same bind and same, same width and circumference here to irritate that bone. Seven millimeters into certain parts is dangerous. Okay, don't cause uh, iatrogenic root canal or something like that. You don't want to be using this with the good stuff. Mop facts. Effect is regional. What does that mean? When you go ahead and introduce a perforation to the cortical plate of the bone, that inflammation will spread on average six to 10 millimeters. Six is a very safe number here, okay? How many times, you know, Ramon is proportional. The more you mop, the more inflammation, the more Ramon is going to occur. How deep, you know, more anterior, less tissue. It's just due to hit the cortical plate. Maxillary posterior, you'd have more tissue back there. You'd go a little bit deeper, a different quality of bone. Uh, word on the street is that Mr. Yoda here was the original mop master uh, in the galaxy far, far away and a long time ago, but Yoda was using a laser. And I love lasers in dentistry here, but he, uh, he may have gotten a little bit of abrasion there and turned to the dark side. All right, where do we mop? How many mops do we do? Looking at this slide here, when we're talking about quadrants and where we're going to be doing our mops, in the upper right maxillary bone, we really want to be do one to two per space. Now, I'm going to stress two per space here on any spot that you mop, especially in the posterior molars, big translational movements. As you move around these slides, if we're looking at single tooth, you know, up towards the anterior maxillary arch, same thing, two to three. Uh, 
the problem is you're going to be, want to be doing this in keratinized tissue. As you look at the lower arch of the, of the anterior mandible, you're going to find that this tissue gets thin here, okay? This is a hard spot to get, you know, more than one spot here. Plus, you've got frontum attachments, muscles, things like that. Be a little careful down here. You don't want to start wrapping up your lip on your frenum with your burr here, and all of a sudden their lips are squeezing as you're doing this. So these spots, maybe you want to do one, one, one mop, and that's going to be okay. Depth-wise, how deep are we really going to do this here? When you look at the maxillary arch, again, you're going to do a lot of this by feel and just learn. Any of my doctors out there who are doing implants, you kind of remember this learning curve when you when you perforate into the bone here, you feel that bind of your of your implant driver. It's very similar with the mops. As you go through the tissue here, when you bind that cortical plate, two things happen. Either A, your patient's not numb enough and they go, oh, hey, I feel that doc. Okay, don't be that one. Or B, you can feel the torsional twist onto your handpiece or your driver. Um, you're gonna really know it with your handpiece when you do it manually. And as you go to the electric driver, you're gonna feel that as well. Once you perf into that, stop, reverse, out, done, okay? You're not driving an implant and you're not looking to go all the way through the plate and get into the medullary bone. That's not necessary. You just got to tap the outside. So again, depth of depth of mop here, maxillary, three millimeters. Mandibular, three millimeters in the front, five to seven in the back. You gotta remember your bone morphology. All right, three easy steps. Know your x-rays, okay? Don't go mopping implants. That's probably not gonna work out in your favor. Your basic start out is gonna be chlorhexidine rinse, okay? We want to zap bacteria, cut down any chance of infection or things like that. To this date, I've never had an infection afterwards or any sort of, any sort of trauma or problem. But give them a Paradex two-time rinse, okay? Anesthetize and accelerate. Uh, Propel is going to tell you a topical or infiltrative, either one may work for you here. I did my initial cases with topical only, and I'll tell you I no longer do that, only because I... You use these strong compounding pharmacy topicals and you can get some tissue sloppage here even at two minutes and there can be adverse reactions. So I just use local, go to town on it here and, and do it that way. Here is my old pharmacy, okay? On the left is something called cyclorinse. If your hygienists aren't using cyclorinse, have them start. It's a wonderful product. It will help numb topically, tongues, cheeks, this and that's nothing you need, but also help with the gums. On the middle, on the right, is best topical ever, and then compounding pharmacy in the middle, blueberry flavor, woodberry. This is a lidocaine, carbocaine, tetracaine, wonderful mix here. Again, this is a topical that was used only, but you're not getting enough infiltration to the cortical bone, in my opinion. Don't do this. This is my new pharmacy. It's very simple, okay? Articane, topical, beer opener with a smile. I give this to all my patients afterwards, so when they're already happy with their smile, they can have this guy's reminder and pop a beer and enjoy it. What's our technique? So using our disposable handheld pressure here, you gotta look at your XYZ axis, okay? As you're pushing the propel tip into the cortical plate and to the tissue, you're gonna to wanna to put your fingers on the backside and just stabilize, you know, just as you would do an implant and other things, you wanna kind of feel that bone. Anyone doing extractions, doing luxation out there, very similar principle. You know, you don't wanna be pushing this down, your patient's having to push back with their neck so they're not being flown across the chair. Put that tip perpendicular to the bone, 90 degrees. Rotate clockwise while applying gentle pressure. And a little trick here, I want you to write this down, is I want you to start, if you're not doing propel already, in the upper arch. Don't start in the lower arch. This is a different bone quality down there. And sometimes it's a little hard to bind that bone. Okay, start on the back side. You've got a clear view, field of view. You don't got hemor blood coming out. If you start in the anterior fronts on the upper side, as you go posterior, well, you might have some heme, depending how quick and fast you're assisted with the surgical suction. Start in the upper back, write that down. Okay, power driver tip trip, same thing, okay? You use pressure by your hand. You can also stabilize the lingual side. Hold power on, start, stop, go down to your depth as achieved, push the reverse button on the handle, pull back out, done. Honestly, after my patients are numb and once I start to propel, I am done with both arches in 10 minutes sometimes less depending how fast we're going. It should not be taking any longer beyond that. All right, clinical slide, about 30 minutes or less post-mop. There are some perforations there, you can't really see them. Guess what, no blood, at least at this point in time. During the first several minutes, there will be some blood. A little tip or trick here, you know, depending how quick my schedule is being booked, 
you know, I will, I will have my patients leave with the trays out if they're doing the, the clear liners. Um, you don't want your patients having the trays in while you do this because they will inevitably have heme go to the trays. And unless they like Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Twilight, you're going to freak some people out. So don't let your patients walk out with muddy trays. It's not good advertising. All right, big thing to know here. We're talking about inflammation. So what do we not want to do? We do not want to control the inflammation, okay? There will be tenderness after this. I usually just recommend patients use Tylenol or give them a prescription for Tylenol 3 if you want to get some a little bit stronger. But no Advil, no Aleve, no NSAIDs. In fact, I even have joked with my patients that I want all the inflammation I can get from them. So go ahead, drink beer, eat gluten, have dairy, have cake. I don't give a damn. Put it all in there, okay? If they get diabetes, that's with their PCP, not me. But I want that inflammatories to increase. It's going to help make my treatment better. They want straight white smile teeth. That's the goal. Let's jump ship a little bit and talk about vibration. Okay. This is something that's a little bit newer to me. I've been doing mops for several years now and some, uh, some vibration. And I'm starting to realize there's a, there's a great benefit and value here and very solid sound science. So vibration wise, we've known about it for over a hundred years. Julius Wolf studies show that bone adapts clothes under which it is placed. Okay. It's the Wolf report. I trust anybody with the last name Wolf. It just sounds amazing. 90s, NASA gets a little serious and talks about how can we help our astronauts with their bone quality and introduce high frequency vibrations, 90 Hertz, a little bit higher than we're talking about for RV pros. Uh, they also looked at low frequency, okay? Current research is showing that, hey, different frequencies, different results, not all vibration is equal. So we're gonna talk about vibration. We've got several, several out in the market. You know, Accelidant's one that's been around for a long time, low vibration. A Propel or V Pros were high vibration. Um, we've got photo illumination, we've got bite pods, all sorts of tertiary companies out there. I don't really use many of them here. I like to believe the science and use what the science has. So looking at some basic, basic science slides here, let's fly through these, but High frequency vibration can significantly increase osteogenic effect. If we look at a control group here, our static on the bar between low frequency and high frequency, we find that percent change in bone volume is, is much more significant with the high frequency vibration. So I, your B pros versus a low frequency vibration, your accelerants. Um, if you've used a seven in the past and you're comfortable with them, great, but you're paying some big cheddar for those. Those are expensive devices. And if you're passing on that to your patient, they're accepting, good for you. I'd love to know what remedy you're using. I5, as you can see, V Pro 5 is a lot cheaper, a lot more predictable. I like this product better. This is a wonderful landmark vibration study published, I believe was 2014. Correct me on that if I am wrong. Um, but we looked at a 10 year independent uh, study looking at variable vibrations of HSV for dosing dental applications. So we looked at frequency, number of cycles per second, the acceleration of the G-force delivered, and the duration, how long was the exposure time. And we look at two different columns here, what's called the catabolic effect and an anabolic effect. With catabolic effect, we look at under orthodontic force. So we're targeting PDL tissues and under an inflammatory condition, the cells respond to osteoclasts, and the result is resorption. So as we have HFV with catabolic effect through ortho or clear ladder therapy, we're finding these clinical applications. We've got accelerated orthodontic tooth movement, an increased magnitude of tooth movement, basically how far the distance is, and differential anchorage. Now, if we look at that after ortho or outside of ortho, so no forces, we're now looking at a tissue state physiologic condition. Target cells now are bone, osteocytes and blasts, and again, bone formation, not resorption, as it was with the catabolic effect. What does all that jargon mean? It means that our potential applications for HFE is improved retention after orthodontic treatment. So if you want to keep your patients from relapsing here, then have them use a V-Pro. Let them use that. They're not compliant with their retainers and their Essex appliance, with Veras, whatever it may be. They should have this as a backup tool to keep them from having to come back and have refinement retreatment. Um, these HFEs lead to improved osseointegration after implant surgery. And then obviously a preservation of bone after tooth extraction. This is something that was even new to me during my research. So if we're trying to keep bone and patients are not having grafts or things of like that done, well, talking about HFV, it's cheaper, okay? What does that mean? HFV resulted in significantly greater tooth movement as frequency goes through. So one more time, looking at our tooth movement on our Y-axis versus our X-axis with the left side being control. 
same thing. With orthodontic force, high frequency, greater tooth movement, low frequency, different tooth movement. All that means is different frequencies have different results. Don't forget that. If we look at the HFU for five minutes, and this again from Propel is going to be the VPRO device, um, what we really see in this graph is a measurement of tooth movement effectiveness over five and 10 minutes. Really not a great increase in movement from five to 10. This is five minutes a day. Okay, I actually tell my patients six because I don't trust my patients. Five minutes, they're going to kind of wishy wash it. Six minutes, I'm, I'm hoping they get five minutes. Your Accelident product here is a 20 minute. You know, it's a nice fancy package device that's well built. 20 minutes is a lot of time. Unless your patients want to drive in the car with it here and Washington State has a hands-free law, well, they might not be the most compliant. You always have to remember that. All right, clinical research here. This is a study just showing randomized controlled aligner accuracy. Um, control is going to be a standard 14-day protocol trade change. Don't worry about the shams. It's no longer relevant. Now we're going to also look at seven days with VPRO5 and five days of VPRO5. Okay, these numbers are significant a percentage of tracking. So this study, randomized control, is showing 14-day control. 84% of these patients tracked fairly well. As we go to a seven-day with the VPRO, that number actually increases to 90%. You go to five days on the VPRO, well, we're back down to about 84. If that's clinically significant for you, great. Use your VPRO, do seven days. If that's 6%, study-wise, doesn't matter for you, great. Do your five days. Get your patients done earlier, do a refinement. If we look again here, okay, HFE, increased rate of tooth movement. We look at the speed and accuracy. 14-day control, 84, sham, don't worry about it. Now, the big one, seven-day VPRO, five, 90%. So we have very good tracking indicated with our HFV devices. Okay, that's what's to come out of these slides. Go back to five day, drops down a little bit here. Sure. Ask yourself again, is that clinically relevant? It's completely up to you. Another thing we think about is discomfort. Okay, HFV will reduce patient discomfort. I've got several patients now who we're doing accelerated treatment on, and I've actually introduced VPRO halfway through treatment because they were too scared or Adverse to having the mops done. And all these patients have reported back and said, hey, Dr. P, it actually feels better. My, I, my teeth feel good. It's, 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 nice. it's a nice sensation. So when we look at these studies, it just shows that the patient, you know, whatever numerical scale they want to use here between day one and three with the HFE is decreased. So what is our conclusion after all that run through? Use for five minutes a day. VPRO5 can improve accuracy and reduce your interval between aligner changes, okay? My goal, if you're doing clear aligners out there, is, is quit this 14-day trade change. Um, Align Technologies came out over a year ago and, and had a massive disclaimer. This was their answer to Accelerate Orthodontics was, we're going to have all doctors, all cases do seven-day trade change, which I thought was a terrible, terrible decision on the company's part. Not all cases can be changed at seven days without acceleration. Um, and if you've done this long enough, you're going to realize that. You're going to end up in POB land or refinement land, which you want to try to avoid here because that is an increased cost for you. Back to our conclusions, VPRO5 can significantly reduce pain discomfort. Don't forget that. The patients will feel better using this device. And you're going to increase your boner modeling makers and, and cytokines. So let's go through an interesting slide I came through during the research here. Um, this is a younger pediatric patient that was post one year after orthodontic treatment. Um, as you can see, a uh, little guy didn't wear retainers. Teeth have shifted, dad is not happy because the recommendation was to get back into orthodontics. Here's the very retainer here and we've got complete loss of tracking on the entire anterior segment and some of the posterior teeth as well. So what's an option here if we're not going to do treatment a second time and incur a massive cost? Well, give a VPRO5. What happened? Same patient, same treatment, VPRO5-5 used only to help seat the retainers. And look what occurred. Okay, patient used it in office five minutes, well tolerated and greatly improved. And guess what? No refinement, no further ortho needed. Okay, this patient also referred apparently, which is huge. You're going to find that your patients are finishing faster, more predictably. Guess what? That's a referral. That's the biggest thing is you want to get, you know, continued growth here. And this is a niche market that you can explore. All right. We're going to fly through these pictures here. This is your lovely HFE device. Okay. This is currently the VPRO, uh, VPRO 5. Um, there are some newer ones out of the market, which I'm not currently using here. 
uh, Dr. Luis Mecho out of Puerto Rico would be a wonderful resource for that, and I can definitely give you his information. He is very heavy on the HFE device and is a bit more familiar with the NuV Pro 5 Plus than I'm not. But additional benefits for this, again, pain reduced, refinements reduced, treatment time reduced, bone remodeling increased, bone density increased. Got stronger jaws here. This is what it looks like. Okay, wireless charging, compact case. Looks like an Invisalign blue, not to drop a company name again. Water resistant, and there is an app apparently as well because every product out there has an app. Oral-B has an app. Sonicare does not have an app. Don't ask me why, but please don't add one. This is what it looks like. Again, I don't use this myself. I usually have a very transparent, compliant relation with my patients. I just ask them how they're going, and they'll tell me. Because um, again, they're only hurting themselves by lying. So cute little uh, app promo pictures here so you can see what it utilizes here. Uh, very basic system on the status light. Blue is uh, five, you know, cycles in progress. Magenta, we got a low battery. Your amber means your device is charging. Green, green, excuse me, is fully charged. And red is a pause mode. If a patient needs to stop using it for whatever reason, it will stay active for about 30 minutes. And after that, it just restarts here. But I just tell the patients five minutes a day, just do it. Same time of day in the car, wherever at. Make sure you're using it. All right. This is my favorite sandwich board. I had this for all of seven days before somebody stole it. And we're on the street as an angry orthodontist down the street here. Didn't like my beautiful new sign. But uh, we're going to talk about how I do it in my office, how I do it upside down, how I do it backwards, how I do it in the mirror. Amazing stuff, okay? What are some contraindications to mops and, um, well, maybe most, most of the mops here is, you know, your ASA 3 patients. Don't bother. Why take the risk? You know, we're not introducing anything unnecessary into their systems that we don't want to complicate and cause other adverse effects. Your patients with a head or a history of head and neck radiation, probably not a great candidate. Um, you know, long-term bisphosphonates, current bisphosphonates, that might be a contraindication. You don't want to mess with that. Don't open up Pandora's box. Your highly anxious and dentophobic patients, you know, they're they're not great. You don't want to be mopping a moving target. Trust me, it's like working on pediatric patients. Uh, if you can sedate or you want to give nitrous, things of that nature, great. Um, but you know, if you're going to lose somebody halfway through it, don't, don't bother. Poorly compliant patients, we all have them out there. They lie through their teeth about their compliance. We know that they're lying. Address it. Don't put it to the side. Your mops will not solve their issues, okay? And I personally don't treat sharks. I, they're scary. They bite you. This is a patient here that magically turned into a shark. This is actually my daughter. I thought it was a cute picture here, but don't do sharks. They're scary. Hey, Petri Advanced Dental Protocol. I tell my patients time after time again during my consults that with the V-Pro, with, my, with the microosseous perforations, we're going to have better, faster, more predictable treatment outcomes. And that should be the goal of anybody. Who doesn't want that? Okay. Shout out to my old rapper days back in the 90s here about being a paper chaser. I get questions all the time about, well, What's the cost? How do we bill for it? What do we collect from the patients? You know, everyone's going to do things a little bit differently. Um, I put a little information here about how you can bill the insurance company. And most insurances will give a payment on this. You know, your average reimbursement's 250 bucks. You know, the stats are it could be as low as 140, as high as 430. Um, you can use the codes listed here, your 7320s, your 7321, a veloplasty. Um, in conjunction with or without extractions. Um, the thing is, you're going to have to give an excessive write-up information notes. Do take pictures um, out of your mops post-mop or during mop if you'd like to here. The downside to this is your patients will probably have a copay. It does eat into the total dental benefits. So if you've got a $1,500 max and you've got a single crown on that, well, guess what? They're waiting on that crown. Um, a lot of my patients here have general restorative work that needs to be done. My alignment here is the first step to proper restorations of the arch. So I, I no longer bill for insurance. Um, over a year, two years ago now, after the advice of a wonderful doctor out of Boston, um, Dr. Anna Barrick here, I just included that into my fee. I raised my fee to accommodate slightly for it here. Um, even with my V-Pro 5, I used to try to get 500 bucks more for that too. I got tired of the uh, nickel and dime charade. I strongly encourage you, if you're going to be doing this here, is to just include it into your treatment here. Your patients will appreciate it here. There's no line items, no argument about money, just flat fee it. Um, if you really want to go for the insurance, fine. I mean, if your front desk is, is 
not busy, mine are very busy, then you can go ahead and chase claims down. But if you want more information about that, you know, you can talk with uh, myself. I'm happy to have my office manager respond back on what we do for our narrative write-ups. Uh, your propel rep might be able to advise. They cannot legally give you any information, but these are the commonly used codes. So if you're going to bill for the insurance, this is what you use. Okay, what's my protocol? Uh, two ways to do this. Mopping at visit one, you know, start of your clear liners, your invisible line, whatever it may be, or mopping at visit two. I'll tell you, uh, based on my protocol, because there's a lot of time involved in initial banding here, I actually will mop on visit two. I think sometimes it can be a lot for a new patient to start treatment, to get the aligners on, to get the education, to get the attachments placed, to get the IPR done. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm them, so I will visit a MOP2. I'll schedule about 60 minutes of total treatment time or chair time. Um, I will do the obviously chlorhexidine rinse two times. It says a minute or so. You know, most people can't switch for a minute, so at least 30 seconds plus. Sometimes I'll throw in a cyclo rinse if it's uh, kind of an uber sensitive patient here, but not always. Uh, topical, your choice, and I use Articane. You can use Carbicane if you want. You can use Lidocaine, but Articane will have better bone infiltration. I will use at least four carps. If I do need to supplement my anesthetic here as I'm doing my mops, I'll use Carbicane. I don't want to give my patients an MI or anything like that. Um, I will do multi-infiltrations, and I'll just start on the lower arch backwards and work my way forward, just so we can have that extra time to let that anesthetic infiltrate into the tissue and bone. One, one nice thing about having IPR done, if you stage your IPR to the second visit, is they are numb as hell, okay? Go to town, IPR the hell out of those teeth. Nobody likes the IPR. Your patients don't like it. I don't like it. The docs don't like it. But when they are numb, it is so much easier. So if you want to traumatize tissue, fine. It's all going to bleed anyway. Okay. Go in for your Propel. One to three mops, each tooth root. Um, I will use a Perio probe, and I'll, I'll push pretty hard, and I'll try to sound out of the bone to gauge whether they're numb or not here. But obviously, as you get into it, or incorporate the bones, you'll find out if someone's not numb. Um, you know, perpendicular bones, we talked about 90 degrees straight. Again, I'm using my implant driver. If you'd like information about how I set mine up, I'm happy to share that. Uh, I, I do and plan and will invest into the driver here, but if I can get Propel to sell me 50 tips on a free driver, then sure, I'll do that. First timers, again, start in the maxilla, posterior. It is easier to engage bone. If you start in the mandible, you might have some difficulty getting the device and the driver to bind with the bone and pull things in. Again, watch soft tissue. If you want to use an Optrigate, I always, always, always use an Optrigate. It's an Ivoclar device. It's wonderful for soft tissue attraction. You can use cheek shields, cotton, but again, it just gets in the way. You want to be able to have a nice, clear visual of that bone. Use the Optrigate. Okay. Um, again, I don't have my patients walk out with trays because usually I mop pretty quickly. Ten minutes later, they're done. They're leaving. I don't want to look like a scene from Interview with the Vampire when they've got bloody trays in. I've got a nice, beautiful lobby that does not bode well. And last but not least, take your IO photos for insurance if you are billing for insurance. All right. The biggest thing for, you know, mops and things of the nature is what do we tell our patients? What do we talk about? And something we have to realize is we live in a very different time with social media, with Instagram, with everything now. You know, Patients, patients want their treatment done yesterday. Okay, they want the lowest price per month. They don't want to wait. So how, do, how can we discuss this with them? And I explained to every patient that MOPS, MOPS allows me to reduce their estimated treatment time um, in half. You know, I'll, I'll coin the term Invisalign in half the time. And you can too. You know, but beyond that, the MOP and the VPRO allow me better and more control of these difficult tooth movements. You know, and we're talking translational movements, you know, molars, expansions, diastema closures, all sorts of stuff. Um, it'll decrease post-tray insertion discomfort here because the bone's going to be looser. And, you know, a, a phrase I'll say during my, my consults is, you know, bone's like a solid rock. Uh, but MOPS turns it to a moldable clay. And we can better shape it that way. You can use terms like acupuncture of the bone. People understand what acupuncture is. Um, and again, my, my goal, I tell the patient, is to get you in and out of line as quickly as possible. I want this done just as fast as you do. Um, dental dimples, dentists do it deeper. Have a, have a laugh with you here in case you want to, you know, talk the patients off the anxiety, anxiety cliff. But uh, just know your audience. Don't get in trouble with these jokes. All right. Three, five, seven day tray changes. What the heck do we do? Well, here's my protocol. I will do with my mop aligners five day changes for... 
uh, cases that involve lingual constriction, uh, space closure, premolar expansion for procline and retrocline in the tooth, and just tipping. Okay, these are very predictable, very solid, clear liner movements. Um, seven days, I'm gonna you know reserve for root torques, which in general you, you don't want to do much of here because they don't work very well. And if you're gonna do it, well, get them off the shit out of them canines. You got 22 plus millimeters of root down there sometimes. That's a long ass tooth. Okay, get triples into there if you want any chance of really moving these canines. And again, very hard movement, those root torques. Intrusion, extrusion, a lot of bone, a lot of stuff to go through. You gotta do gotta do seven days, at least for me on these. Translational movements, again. Seven days. You go too quickly on that, you're gonna get tipping versus translation and you're gonna end up in UOB hell. You don't wanna be there. All right, did I miss three days? Nope, just didn't talk about it yet. Um, I have personally started some cases now under an implementation of three days. Uh, these are for my very compliant patients that I think will be good with it. Um, I've seen plenty of research out there with three days from some colleagues as well, and I do think the science is there, but uh, I'm not going to lecture on something that I don't have enough information on just yet. Um, the indications for a three-day change are it's going to be similar to your five-day. You know, look at your constrictions, lingual constrictions, proclinations, or your tipping cases, um, simple premolar four expansion. These are, these are easy, predictable, clear letter movements. You know, ensure that you're double mopping each site to increase your inflammatory response and effect. You know, really try to avoid those single single mops. Um, I got to say that my early days of doing mops, I I was hesitant, you know, to go through and and do two three spots, and I would do one, thinking that was sufficient here, and ended up with a lot of refinements. We'll go through some cases here at the end. Um, you, you don't want to do a three day here on on root takes and or, and translational movements here. You're gonna end up in posterior open bite hell. You know, if you do a lot of clear liners, you you've been there. It's not fun to get out of, and it's hard to get out of it. Okay, so. Uh, don't push the gas too far if you're not ready to drive the wheel. And I always recommend a combination of MOPS and HFV, okay, if you're going to really push these hard cases or do a three-day case. Um, with my HFE, I'm typically doing seven-day tray changes, and if I really want to double double up on these, then I'll consider doing a three-day. All right, back to my in-office protocol. Don't forget, Articane, Topical, Laugh, Beer, I don't care what you use. All right, this is from last week. I try to get a more updated new slide. This is a patient here, visit two. We are doing IPR, 0.3 millimeters, all across the lower arch. That has already been performed at this point. And as you can see from the slides, a uh, couple of pre-dimples here from earlier mops that I had done. And it's, I'm trying to get a good angle of sort of showing where I've done. As you can see, this is a lower anterior and he had good KG here, good, good granulized tissue. So. I went ahead and did two perforation sites to really make sure I can move those teeth around. The patient did fine with it. He's actually laughing throughout the procedure. I'm gonna go through some case studies here that I had come across that were fairly interesting here, and then we'll go through some of my own cases. Um, this is a you know case study here showing a diagnosis of midlines off. You got a, you got a posterior crossbite, lower anterior protrusion. You know, this was clear aligners, not gonna do any orthodontic talk here, um, straight wire talk. This is a single mop application, seven day tray changes, just under eight months. Um, you know, wonderful finish. They, they, they lingualized at number 21 premolar, they buccalized number 22, did a nice job holding all the way around. You gotta think about what this patient walked in, what they walked out of here in, in a little over six months. That's pretty damn fascinating. Secondary thing again here, this is a class one crowding case. And we've got an anterior crossbite, very, very narrow constrictive arches. I don't even know where the hell number seven is. You don't see it until you look at the maxillary occlusal shot there. That thing is back, okay? A lot of people will just pull that guy out here, but no, 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 patients don't want extractions, okay? So let's expand the hell out of that upper bone, okay? This was a triple mop application here. I have personally not done three. I've only done two. I think after the second time, your patients, unless they really love and like you, they're gonna say, oh, we gotta do that third time. Um, but most impressive on this, expansion, no refinement, less than a year. Okay, if you've done this long enough and you don't think that's impressive, you're you're not doing enough. Okay, that's this is great stuff. Another one here, class three relationship, very severe crowding discrepancy on two sides all over the board here. This was a single mop application. Okay, clear line of line therapy, seven and a half months. Love it. Last one here, moderate severe crowding. Okay, this case uh, this case had a lot of things going on. Class two elastics distalization, 
I, as a general rule, tend not to move my molars unless I have to. I'll tip them all day long. Um, translational movement of molars is very difficult. If you've got a good, good handle on on your elastics here, then you're welcome to attempt them here. But you're going to be mopping back to back to those molar positions, and that's that's a little difficult to access. I'll be honest. Um, this is a 52 aligner case. Okay, after the mop application during the distalization, they did five day trade changes. Okay, this Dr. Matt Walton is a gangster. I tip my hat to him. He went to three days thereafter when the distalization was done. Beautiful finish. I have a little minor POB there, which will settle in over time. Okay, here's what a couple of my cases here. This is a wife we started last year sometime. This is a 35 aligner case. A um, lot of deep bites, open contacts, things of that nature. We did mops two times on her, a uh, seven day tray change. And this is seven months in, we're not quite done with this case. I did not put on the final case just yet because she's in the middle of restorative at the moment. Um, beautiful finish, okay, she referred her husband. Didn't put her husband in here because she was wanting to have all the glory to herself. This is a very, very difficult case that we had to do here. This is a new patient presenting last year. Um, name is Gene. He has severe periodontal disease, deep bite, crowdedness, just a whole bunch of wonk going on, okay? And his chief concern was actually he had a traumatized number uh, nine and 10, has a little lip scar, you can see in the upper photo there. We didn't bring up the crowding and deep bite. So we discussed proper orientation for long-term treatment wise. Uh, we did mop one time, in hindsight, I would have done two times. Did a seven day tray change. Here's that 10 months post refinement, major period improvement. Okay, I absolutely love this case. He is a completely different man. He smiles now. I don't love the crowd on number nine, but he doesn't care. His wife doesn't care. And he referred his wife. He came as a new patient as well. That's a key to think about here is patient referrals. That's awesome stuff. Okay. Case number three, Rondi, 22 aligners, pre refinement. Okay, this is an apnea patient here, currently getting a sleep device fitted. But uh, first goal was expand the archway. Let's get this woman some breathing. Let's get her some air. Uh, left is pre, right is post, six months. Wonderful. Uh, last one here is a very, very constricted case. Uh, younger gal, Erin, she's still in progress here. I believe she's down to her last couple of months. Uh, 27 aligners, initial clean check came back. We did mop one time, did a seven-day trade change. In hindsight, I think I would have done this at five-day trade changes, and introduced HFV, and kept her going through. We had a little loss of track in the anterior, so she is currently at this state as of last month. Wonderful expansion, crowding is almost completely resolved. We just got a little refinement to do in the lower arch. And that's at seven months versus the original plan of 12 months. Okay, super happy. Her sister's also in treatment here, exact same case, but you're gonna see two of those. Okay, I talk a mile a minute because my brain works a mile a minute and I've had a 12 hour work day, so let's go ahead and do some closing. Um, I, I really was trying to put my brand and spin on what I do for my perforations, my accelerated ortho. And truly, there's there's zero reasons why you can't start doing this today. Um, I, I mean that to say, I tell my patients, this has been my favorite treatment modality that I've learned in the last three years. Um, to see these hard movements that I was too scared to take on before using the Visalign Assist several years back to what I'm doing now, it's night and day. And truly, I would not practice my orthodontic care without it now. Um, I would start with five and seven day tray changes till you're comfortable. You know, um, three is a little dicey out there and you know, be, be predictable. Uh, start with the five on, on those easy cases. You know, a little harder ones here, do the seven. Okay, you can't go wrong. Um, you want to get fun with this, do a, do a demo on a staff member for social media. You know, you can kind of pretend you're, you're giving her a, you know, or show her with a, or him, if you have a male assistant or a male hygienist. With a V Pro device in the mouth, you know, do a do a propel, give them a cyclo rinse or something here, and kind of videotape some stuff. But get the word out there, um, let people see what this means, or videotape a patient and do a testimonial. That stuff speaks volumes. You know, your entire team needs to understand how the science and how this works. Okay, for them to be on board, um, they really need to grasp and 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 teach how fast, efficiently mops can allow you to do your treatment. You know, I estimate my chair time in practice is, is at least $500 per hour, depending on procedures, but as an average. So when we, we free up these multiple visits and your mops and things of that nature is going to free up at least a couple, if not several visits, then I, I look at those chair times as saving me up to $1,000 per case and probably solidly $1,000 per case. 
you know, when you when you talk about your overhead costs for materials, about $150 for a tip, that's a no-brainer. Okay? How many times you drop that on an overpriced steak at the steakhouse? You know, you're going to spend more money on your vibration devices here, but this is wonderful for your patients who are just too turned off by this, the sound of blood or, or you know, acupuncture, bone dimples, drilling it deeper, things of that nature, then, then give them the V-Pro or tack on $500, discuss the benefit. If patients see value in anything, money's not an issue. They're going to pay that cost. It's all about you and the staff teaching the value to the patient. Don't forget, they don't know anything. That is your job as a provider, a physician, to teach these patients so they can understand. At the end of the day, you give the information, let them let them tell you where they're driving the bus on the map. Okay? Don't forget, patients want their treatment done yesterday, so do not be their rate limiting factor, and I mean that. Don't be the reason why they're taking longer and they're burned down the treatment 18 months later. Nobody wants to be in, in aligners for 18 months, okay? They're gonna burn out, you're gonna burn out. Market your practice, the fast brace or the fast aligner office, okay? You saw my sandwich board out there in Bizline at half the time. You know, I don't, I don't think you should go out and post the science of dentist drill it deeper or things of that nature, but find something fast and catchy and use light colors. You know, my sandwich board gets me as a new patient, one or two patients per month as the best 250 bucks in advertising I ever spent. Now go to hell, whoever stole my, my new board, but uh, you know, don't forget these orthodontists here. They're, they're scared. They're scared of blood and they don't do a lot of anesthetic here. So you have a specialty that you can utilize. Okay. Last but not least, raise your fees, include the treatment. If you don't want to get complicated and bogged down with insurance claims and write up some narratives and photos, then screw it. At 500 bucks, throw in your whitening, do it all together. I'll, no all a cart, just all in one. Your patients will actually appreciate that. Okay, don't forget, love your smile. Connie loves a smile more than anybody that I know. Questions, things of that nature, I'm gonna open up the floor so I don't keep you all here. I know it's, uh, Approaching nine o'clock on the East Coast time, even later for anybody up in Nova Scotia. And I'd be happy to answer what I can. My email is there. I am an open book. I love, I love talking dentistry. I love this product. Um, and I was quite honored to be asked to speak about it. So hopefully you can pick up on my, uh, my enthusiasm. So thank you. Have a good night. I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for any questions. Feel free to type them in and I'll try to answer to the group. Okay, I've got one question here, which we're gonna make this we're gonna make this fun because this is my, my nature. But my IPA with HFE, my favorite beer is Lagunitas IPA from California. It's a wonderful beer, not too hoppy. Um, I got a question here from Dr. Keith Schwartz. Says I've been doing Propel for a while and see the benefits. I'm still seeing some cases slightly off track. We use Munchies too. What else would you recommend? Um, Keith, that's a good question here. For those of you not familiar with munchies, munchies is a triangular device used to help see aligners and get things caught up. It's, it's, a, it's a chewing device. If you mention, if you remember the old school chewies, munchies is a more modern version that lets you localize your forces between the canines. Um, there's little indents for the upper arch and tears. There's little uh, indents for the lower arch and also for the upper and lower canines here. Um, I've noticed that when I start getting cases off track here, I have to look and see when was the propel done. The biggest thing to, that you forget about is, is when you propel, you know, you have between 12 to 16 weeks of active inflammation that you can still do the seven, five day tray changes. Okay. Now, as some of those graphs and slides show that your, your effectiveness of the cytokine release inflammation, it starts to drop off tremendously. So you're going to start your, your initials at five days here, but at the three month mark, you know, you can push it to four, but honestly, the three month mark here, you're, you're kind of zapped out. So that's why, Keith, uh, it's important to do five days here initially here. And then at that point, I would schedule the four month mark for either secondary mop, if you're finding that we're getting off. And something to not get into a trap of here, so you don't waste the time, is you never want to do a mop right before you do a refinement. Because if you're, if you're using a business line like I do primarily, when you mop that patient and you send off a refinement, well, it can be up to two, three weeks to get that patient back. You just killed 20% of your time. Okay, so I would utilize secondary mops at the four month mark here, especially after the refinement, or if you're doing a refinement at that seat tray or do a V-Pro. Okay, you're out 500 bucks in materials, but not the end of the day. Um, I would have to apologize on Sadia here for mispronouncing your name. I, sh I shouldn't do that because I'm peachy like the dish, but question is how long do you wait between your mops? 
um, as I was talking with Dr. Keith Schwartz there, I, I wait between three to four months. Okay, at the 16 week line, you're, you're pretty much out of gas at that point. You have to go back and re-irritate the bone and tissue to get the cytokine level back up. Um, if you don't wanna do that, if your patients are against a secondary measure, because some might be, um, then I would go ahead and discuss VPRO. Um, sometimes I'll charge the patient the VPRO fee at that point for what he done mops, um, at least old school wise. Or at the end of the day, you want your patient to be happy. Happy patients are happy referrals. So just give them the damn VPRO, okay? Just make sure your fees are appropriate for it. Um, do you have a consent form for MOP? Yes, I created my own here. I'm happy to share it, uh, Dr. Laura Johnson. Um, if not, you can get it from your Propel rep. They have something here they can they can give you here. Mine is just a play on that. It's very, very straightforward, just like a surgical consent would be. Um, Ron Hayes' question here is, is the charge of $500 for just the VPRO5 or for most MOP and VPRO5? Um, again, I don't charge any longer for that. I did raise my fee $500. I, as a go-to, will talk to my patients about the MOPs first. Um, I love the science behind VPRO and the fact that it is you know, less tender. The hard thing about VPRO for me is patient compliance. Um, as much as I want to trust my patients, I don't trust my patients, okay? You look at what the average percentage on patient compliance is for pharmaceuticals and drug taking here, and it's maybe 37%, you know? So if I, if I assume that that's similar to my VPRO patients, a third of my, my VPRO patients are using them every day, five plus minutes as they should be. Um, so it, it's hard for me to, to, to do that. So initially my go-to is MOP. My secondary, if they don't want the MOP, is to do the VPRO here and just, you know, kind of pull and pray. Excuse the joke there. Um, but again, if you're going to be doing both here, or if you're going to add in a VPRO5 later here, then you may want to consider adding an additional charge or, again, just increasing your fees off the get-go. Teach the value of what the product does and don't worry about the nickel and dime part. Hope that makes sense. All right, Keith, you got a recent case, 14 aligners, five-day case. Lateral didn't rotate completely because your canine and your central chewed up all the surface area on that. Um, I'd be happy to look at your clin check, Keith, if you could send that to me. Uh, you know, there's a reason why we call laterals lucking laterals. You can figure out the grammar and mathematics on that. They are one of the hardest teeth to track, okay? You gotta check your attachment on that and see how much surface area is being chewed up there. Um, you know, I'm gonna obviously tell you manchi use, which you've probably done here, but I'd need to see your clin check and see what kind of attachment was done to give you any advice on why that lateral lost its tracking. You're not alone. I, we lose plenty of time on extrusions there, but. Um, there's specialized attachments that can be that can help with that. Okay, I have to look back for you. All right, Laura Johnson. Again, do we do you continue HFV once patient is in retention? You know, I will. I'll tell them here that I mean these devices here. I can't tell you how long they last, but um, for the first 16 weeks afterwards, I'll tell them to continue. You know, your, my standard retention protocol is for four months after we finish is to wear the Viveras uh, 22 hours a day, just as a typical case would be. And you go ahead and use that VPRO as well. It's gonna increase the bone density here and help lock things in faster. You know, at some point, they're gonna get burnout here from using it here and or the device might break. So by all means, tell them for the retention phase, go ahead and use that VPRO continually. Um, can I do mops on my boat, Mr. Jose Ab Abedin? Absolutely, you can mop anywhere here. As long as your consent is signed, your anesthetic is good, your beer is cold and the sun is out, you can mop on a boat, you can mop on a plane, you can mop them any way you want. Don't forget that. All right, study again. Can we reuse the propel tip on the same patient for the second mop? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no. Okay, I've gotten this question before from doctors here saying, well, why can't I use the same thing? Why not just use a round burr my implant driver? Okay, the obviously with the implant driver and the round burr, there's morbidity of the tissue and there's non-coverage here. You know, I look at I look at my Propel company and my Propel rep as a partnership. Um, they've supported me, they've helped me with my treatment modalities and given me tools that I can utilize to increase uh, my production and get better case finishes. Um, Propel is a small, small startup company, you know, and, and as any mom and pop shop there, I, I personally would think that would be kind of breach of ethic and breach of contract to reutilize that. And I, I would do it. Um, you know, when you autoclave these, you know, sure, you can probably blunt the tips a little bit there, but just use a new tip, okay? You, you don't necessarily want to take the, the fact that this may not work as well here. And again, you're looking at 130 bucks per tip if you're part of the AACA or if you've got a big order here. Just, um, you know, I, I say eat the cost here, support your company because 
I've got a wonderful relationship with my rep and my and propel, and I, I love what they do for me, and vice versa. So you, you always kind of got to think about the stuff that's that's not in paper, and especially with these smaller shots. Okay, if this was the big Align Corporation with their overpriced scanner sleeves that they won't uh, give us for free, eh, okay, wipe it off, cold sterile lip. Don't quote me on that. Do what you want with it. Anna Barrett, good night. Nice for seeing you on here. All right, Mr. Bill Tellman, do you recommend doing both MOP and VPRO on difficult cases? Absolutely. Difficult is a loose term. So if we're looking at certain rate limiting movements here, translational movements, distalizations, um, you know, rotation more than 20 degrees, your root torques, uh, intrusions of maxillary deep bites, especially with clear liners. You know, you might want to consider, I mean, I'd, I'd mop the hell out of those long root tooth for sure. Um, and then use use the device on top of it here to, to help with that. You know, do clear liners do intrusion very well? No, they don't. They, frankly, they, they really don't do it the best here. Um, so anything you can utilize to increase. Now, I, I use munchies a lot here to help with some of these, these CV movements here. And if you don't know what munchies are, Google it. Um, and not the munchies that you eat in Colorado. You're going to look for the colored ones in an Australian company. Go to the AACA. American Academy Clear Liner website, and you'll have plenty of information on um, Visalign Group there and also the products that we use. Um, but that would be, be my short term answer is if, if you're not going to duel up on those hard, hard tier cases, then go ahead and put a munchie there instead with the mops. Um, that'll get your overhead cost down at least a little bit. Um, you know, is it possible to damage roots with mops? Sure. You know, can you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Chetna? You, you can. That goes back to your pre-framing. You know, you don't start a root canal, you don't start an implant, you don't start an extraction, you don't do anything without checking the x-ray and getting the pre-plan. Okay, 80% of, of what you do is, is planning. Um, I, to this date now, I've, you know, got just under, let's see, four years of experience with my Propel here. I've, I've not hit a root to the date that I'm aware of. Um, I've had very little discomfort patients afterwards or patients that they absolutely would never do that again. Um, but, you know, especially on the lower arch and, and things of the nature, you can see the root anatomy palpate around. I, I think a common mistake that doctors will do initially is they'll, they'll go too superficial to the gum line and they end up propelling the tissue. So you can propel the tissue if you want just to practice, but it's just going to you know make tissue morbidity and, and you get no clinical effect out of that. Um, patients that I've heard of having the roots hit there will we'll complain of some discomfort for a couple of weeks here, but as a long term implication and in effect, everything seems to go away. And I've had I've heard of no long-term cases that cause cause damage here. All right, Ms. Phyllis Ho, how do you remove the mops? Well, you're not removing the mops because you're not placing anything in there permanently. Um, now, something like a TAD device, a bone screw, yes, this is a fixated device that's put into the plate of the bone and left permanently. As far as Removing mops again with the device that we use, the Propel device. You're only you're only prepping into the bone here, and then reversing coming out immediately. Nothing is actually permanently left in place. Um, the whole purpose is to go ahead and irritate and cause a microosseous perforation of that cortical plate of that bone. Nothing is permanent into it. You're you're you're, you're drilling in, you're drilling out. So there's nothing nothing really to be removed. Um, Chenna, you asked about being concerned with bleeding after the mop. Um, I, I put a couple slides out, which maybe I should have left in, but showing a immediate post-op picture of the site with some minor he hemorrhage, five minutes and 10 minutes. Um, on pretty much every single patient I do, within 10 minutes, there's no bleeding. You can see where the marks were done. Um, I do a fair amount of Botox in my practice here. Same thing if you're doing uh, infiltrations into the glomerular complex on the bones and the tissue, you'll, you'll see a little wheel or a welt initially. Within several minutes, it's primarily gone. Now, you'll still see the little pimple there after the perforation is done, but as far as bleeding risk, it should be low. Now, you got to watch out for any sort of platelet, um, any sort of chain reaction medications that can be hindering that, and that can cause increased bleeding, but in general, it's always stopped pretty quickly after that. Okay, Mr. Bill Tellman. Last question I got here is, can you use an implant driver instead of a propel driver? Um, absolutely, okay. I, I did briefly talk about it here because I actually do use my implant driver. Um, I place predominantly Nobel implants in my practice. Um, and uh, with the manual driver settings, I've, I've changed the RPMs and torque down to something congruent and matching. If, if you'd like my information on what my settings are, um, please email me, email me excuse me, um, at drpetriedmd at gmail.com. And I can give you some insight for that. Uh, again, I, I do think the hand-free is a wonderful device, and 
you know, I'm going to be picking it up here once I search through my next round of propel tips. Uh, just because it's more convenient, you know, the downside of my implant driver is I have to hit reverse, okay, forward, reverse, forward, and uh, it's kind of tedious, you know, and I, I like to be things very straight and very, very to the point. So, again, email me if you have questions about that, but by all means, can you use your implant driver? Yes, you can. All right, GP, North American Nation, any other questions for me tonight? Okay. Well, thank you for listening to me talk a mile a minute. My Alaskan beer amber was great. My IPA was good. And time to go take a crack on the boat here in Seattle before things get too wet. All right. Thank you all for the uh, <laughs> wonderful question and comments. Uh, Dr. Avedin, I will see you in some point in Miami. I cannot wait. Dr. Sazar, I love you too. Dr. I, of course, you're awesome as well. Oh, and Dr. Carlos Soto, if you don't know what digital smile design is in combination with your Invisalign cases, please, please, please look into digital smile design. I think this is where the field and realm is headed. If you want to be ahead of the curve, uh, Dr. Carlos Soto is a walking example of that. She's based out of Florida. Um, Google her, look her up. Uh, it, is, it is the next evolution regarding planning for our restorative cases in combination with orthodontic Invisalign clear line therapy. All right. Thank you, everybody. I had a good time. This was fun. We'll do it again. I look forward to hearing from you. And Keith, nice work. Go to DSD. All right. Good night, everybody.